Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Mess. So Tarek and our continuing series on the Steam Deck, more importantly how to get some of the best emulators that Emu Deck and the Steam Deck have to offer set up so you can be playing them on the go. And a lot of people are requesting a Nintendo 3DS tutorial, so that's what we're going to be doing today. I would say this is medium to hard on the setup process, so definitely follow along. If you follow all the steps, you'll definitely be playing 3DS on your Steam Deck. Before we get to fire involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But once you get the 3DS set up on your Steam Deck, it works incredibly well as soon as the shaders are finally cached. I'll get to that later in the video. But who doesn't want to play Sonic Lost World on their Steam Deck? If you've never played this game before, I'm saying it's definitely a Sonic hidden gem. More people need to be talking about it and playing it. Now use the Emudeck GitHub page as a resource anytime you have any questions because it shows you exactly what system we're going to be talking about, the emulator, the ROM format, and whether or not you need a BIOS file. For the 3DS, the answer for a BIOS is you don't need one, but there is another file you may or may not need, a text file depending on the format of the ROMs you dump from the games that you illegally own, and I will get into that in just a moment, but just be aware there's no technical BIOS for this. You will see I have the games that I want to add over to my Steam Deck, all games from my collection, and I will just go ahead and copy and paste them over to any sort of external device. You can FTP into the Steam Deck if you want, I just use USB, I find it to be the easiest and fastest. We'll create a new folder on the SD card that I'll plug in with the USB adapter, and I will paste my ROMs over there. Just be aware that 3DS ROMs can be quite big and it's going to take a long time to transfer them over, not terribly long. But this is why I always recommend for larger games, use the Windows version of the emulator and make sure all the games that you're going to transfer over work first. You don't want to send a 4GB game to an SD card and then to your Steam Deck to find out that you didn't dump it correctly, there's a problem with the file, etc, etc. If it works on Citra on Windows, it will work on Citra on Steam Deck. If it doesn't work on Windows, it's not going to work on your Steam Deck. So just use this little time-saving feature to make sure you don't spend 30 minutes transferring files and none of them work. The only other thing I said earlier is there is the keys.txt file. I recommend you guys use decrypted files. It just makes this so much easier, but some people are not going to want them. I'm not going to tell you where to find the key file. You need to deal with that yourself by dumping it from your 3DS. It's the way to do it. Wink, wink. You'll just go ahead and paste it over to the root directory as to where you put those ROMs. And like I said earlier, all of my tutorials depend on using a dock or another way to get a USB thumb drive or an SD card with USB adapter into your Steam Deck. Plus, honestly, who doesn't want a dock to play it on your television? I'll leave a link in the description of the dock I use below. It's not an affiliate link. I make no money. I just like it. I trust it. I think you guys will too. Now once you put that USB media into your Steam Deck dock, you're going to get the mount and open option. We'll go ahead and open that here and you will see the file folder that I built with all of those different ROMs that I'm going to be putting on my Steam Deck. It's super simple guys, no big deal whatsoever. We'll go over to our ME Deck installation, we'll go under the ROMs folder and it's the second because it starts with a 3, alphabetically that's a number, it comes first. And in systeminfo.txt, it will show you all of the different file formats that supported, just like it did on the GitHub page. So if you're not quite sure what you need to put in file format wise, you can just open up the text file in the 3DS folder and it will tell you all of the different file formats it accepts. Once we're in the correct folder, we'll go ahead and we will copy and paste our ROMs over. In this instance, it took about nine minutes and that's why, again, I recommend you test these before you send them over to your Steam Deck because we would have lost 20 minutes if we didn't realize that these files work. It's definitely important, so make sure you test before you transfer. It's definitely a measure twice, cut once situation. Now that we have all the ROMs we want to transfer over, we can go back into the BIOS folder. Now earlier I said 3DS does not require a BIOS, that is true, but you're going to see a Citra folder in here. If you want to use the key text file that you got from your system, this is where you're going to copy it over. It's actually a shortcut folder because this is going to the Citra system data folder. But go ahead and copy that key file over. I've already done it once on my system, but I'm going to do it again for the tutorial. But honestly, I don't recommend doing this. I've had mixed results with dealing with this. I definitely recommend the decrypted file set. It's going to make your life a lot easier. Once we have all our files open, we're going to go over to Emudeck and we're going to pop into Manage Emulators just so you can better understand the hotkeys. I'll show them to you on screen because there are a lot of hotkeys for Citra and 3DS on your Steam Deck. Just scroll down to you see Citra, hit Manage, and it's going to tell you in here again that there's no BIOS needed, but if you want to use certain file sets, that key text folder is going to be very important. 
Now on the right side of the screen, we're gonna get all of the different hotkeys. Definitely make sure you pay attention to these. These are gonna be super useful when you're in the emulator on the handheld OS mode. If you're on desktop like I am now, not as much important, but definitely hugely important once you get back in. So now that we have all the files on our Steam Deck, we want to make sure that they show up in our actual library. Just make sure you read the notification about how the controls slightly change, and then make sure that you have the Citra parser on. By default it should be, but definitely check it out. Once you do that, just go ahead and hit parse, and be aware that there is no drop down menu for 3DS as far as the different categories are concerned. Hopefully EmuDeck updates soon and adds a couple more of these, I would love to see that. But because we don't have that and we can't just select the system, we know we added a Resident Evil game. So I'll just go ahead and scroll down until I get to the R's and make sure the game that I expect to be there is there. If that's the case, then it ingested everything correctly. You'll see Revelations right there. We are good to go. If you want to change your cover art, you can use that little arrow. But otherwise, when you're ready, go ahead and hit Save to Steam. It'll take like 5 to 10 seconds. It'll say Done. And now you know all of those games are available to use in sort of that handheld operating system look mode. From there, we can just completely close out of Steam ROM Manager. Now you can launch Citra from the desktop, just like you can pretty much every other emulator that is standalone. And you will see here that all of the games have been ingested automatically. That's what EmuDeck does for you. From here, you can change some settings. You can also change them within Citra when you're using handheld OS. It is totally up to you. I like this a little bit better, but your mileage may vary. The one thing I recommend changing right off the top and enable new 3DS mode should be checked. If it's not, definitely do that is going over to graphics and using the internal resolution renderer to 3x. This is going to closely match the Steam Deck's overall resolution. Otherwise, I think all of the settings are exactly as they should be, and you're really not going to need to worry about changing anything else. I mean, you can play around with whatever settings you want. Just make sure you're doing with them. So if you break something, you know how to revert it. Audio device should be set as auto by default, and it definitely still is here. Now, if you want to launch a game from desktop mode, we just go ahead and double click it. All of the controls will be bound via MU Deck. That does it automatically once you install the program, and you can just start playing whatever 3DS games you have added. But granted, not anybody is walking around with their Steam Deck in desktop mode on the train, on a plane, or on their way to work, so we definitely want to go back over to more of that handheld OS. Let's go ahead and close out of Citra. We return to gaming mode, and we'll be in the options menu to be able to select those games and they're going to show up under Nintendo 3DS. Kind of funny that the folder is 3 but it is Nintendo underneath your library. And then from there you can launch whatever game you would like. And we're going to start with Resident Evil because there are a couple caveats and hitches that you need to deal with. Some games upon startup are going to ask you to enter your name and it's going to look for a keyboard prompt. You will see here once we select new data it's going to say enter your name. Hold down the Steam key and press X. That's going to bring the virtual keyboard up and you can enter in whatever name you so choose. I'm going to go for VGE. I wonder why. From there, you just go ahead and hit Steam and X again to remove the keyboard. And you'll use the right mouse pad to go ahead and push in on OK. You need to add that name and you need to use the virtual keyboard to do it. From there, we will get into Resident Evil Resolutions. No big deal whatsoever. You're going to notice it is hitching. This is just going to happen. It's compiling the shaders and it needs to cache them. Every single time you play a new game, you're going to get hitching at the start. This is not a situation where reducing down the internal resolution would matter. It is just the shader cache. So be aware of that. This is not a problem. And if we use the left mouse pad and go ahead and thumb through and push in on the full screen mode, you're going to see that you can bring up the Citra menu. And if we go into emulation and configure, we can configure independent games settings so we could go ahead and move this over to a lower resolution to see if it makes any difference whatsoever you can set global resolution or you can set per game resolution so we'll go down to 800 by 480 which honestly isn't going to make any difference whatsoever because it is still a shader caching issue you'll see here things hitch until those shaders are cached and then everything is going to become smooth again so just be aware that when you first play a new game on citra on your steam deck you are going to see a couple hitches here and there and that is just because the shaders have not yet compiled. Now moving over to something like Sonic Lost World, the L5 button behind your hand is going to change the screen configuration. You can do it however you want. Just be aware L5 is always going to control that. And by default, when Citra opens a game, it is not going to open in full screen mode. So use your left thumb, pop it on that mouse pad, and then click into full screen. That is how you're going to get the game to fill the window. I know that's going to trip a bunch of different people up. 
Now don't forget the 3DS was a touchscreen and not every single game coded things so that you could use a button input versus a touchscreen. You will see here that I need to use the right mouse pad to go ahead and click it on confirm. There's no button to confirm the name we entered so sometimes you do need to use that right mouse pad and move your thumb around. It just depends on what game it is so if you can't find a button to articulate a setting it's going to be on the right mouse pad. But from there, once you get into everything, you're going to be playing 3DS games and it's going to be an absolutely awesome time. Just be aware that the shader cache is going to hitch and that you do need to use those touch screens on the mouse pads to be able to play certain games, especially point and click adventure games are going to definitely utilize that all the time. But if you follow the steps of this tutorial, you're going to be playing 3DS on the Steam Deck and I think it looks absolutely great. On docked, it is really nice. On handheld with that great Steam Deck screen, it looks even better. But if you run into any problems or if you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. I'm always happy to help you guys. And leave me a comment for any of the emulation setup videos I haven't done yet that you would love to see. But follow these steps, make sure you do everything, and you'll be playing 3DS on your Steam Deck. See you next time. Bye-bye.